Hello, my name is Emil and welcome to the first ever devlog for my small mobile RTS game that currently has the development name Tribes. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. As I said, my name is Emil and I recently graduated from university, where I studied science in games programming. And I've always had a dream of making my own game studio while sharing the process with you guys. So welcome to the first step of probably many to making this dream a reality. I have a lot planned, so don't forget to subscribe and stay in touch. As some of you may have seen, I have made a couple of feature highlights, covering different features of my game in depth. This is not one of those. This is the first devlog where I share the progress overall, talk about my plans and answer questions from you guys. And then if there is something I feel deserve a separate video, or something specific you want to know how it works, I'll make a feature highlight on that. Hopefully that seems like a good plan. So back to tribes. What is it? And what are my plans for it? Tribes is a small strategy game where you have a procedurally generated map where you can build small cities, train warriors and gather resources for your tribe and you play against other tribes on the same map and the goal is to be the last tribe standing. You might have tried a mobile game called Polytopia. Tribes takes some inspiration from that but we're gonna focus more on the city building aspect where you expand your city and upgrade your defenses and training camps to make better warriors. Think of it as a mix between Polytopia and Clash of Clans. Right, so why did I choose to make this game? I have been using Unreal Engine to develop my games for quite a while now, but recently I wanted to dive into the world of mobile games and thought, why not give Unity a go? It's a popular, well-known engine, it's versatile, and it seems like the perfect choice for mobile games. And it gives me a chance to try a new engine. Little did I know that I probably picked the worst time to step onto the Unity train. Drama and changes everywhere, studios questioning their life choices and me wondering if I accidentally stepped into a soap opera. The quick version of all this drama is that above a certain threshold, they wanted to charge the developers every time someone installed their games. I won't get into detail as you've probably heard a ton about this already, but because of this, tons of studios were saying goodbye to Unity and honestly, who can blame them? Although, fast forward a bit, Unity seemed to have found a more sensible path, but the thing is, by even considering to make all these changes, they lost the trust of so many game developers using their tools. Like, game development is a pretty serious business and trusting your weapon of choice and for many their main source of income is crucial. And I was already a Unity skeptic, but I decided to give it a shot. Try everything once, right? But when I'm being welcomed with this whole roller coaster of uncertainties and drama, I think it's safe to say that I will continue staying away in the future. But for tribes, as I've already started development, it's a bit too late to jump ship, so I'll stick to Unity and trust issues for now. With that out of the way, this is the current state of tribes. Let me take you through the development process. It all started with this beautiful, if I do say so myself, hexagon landscape. We have high quality grassy plains, lush forests and lakes. Or well, the graphics are pretty simple, but to me it's perfect. And this is all procedurally generated. So every time I start a new game, the map changes. This is one of the features that I've already made a feature highlight on. So if you want to know how all of this works under the hood, head over to my channel after this video and check it out. I also made sure that moving the camera and zooming would work on both PC and mobile, and of course feel smooth. And all of this is covered in the second feature highlight on my channel. Cool. Now, one of the ideas for the game is that you start off with one hero character that will need to gather the first resources and start your village. This hero character will of course change depending on what tribe you have picked, but I quickly made a simple viking character to act as the hero for now. We'll use him throughout the development to test stuff, and then we will add more heroes later. If you have any suggestions for hero characters and tribes we could add, please let me know in the comment section. So here he is, our first hero character. I also made him spawn with his own little campsite, which will be the roots of his thriving kingdom. When you select your character, you'll see that an area around him is marked. This is the movement radius that this hero has. So now, if I click a tile within this movement radius, he will joyfully skip over to that tile using A star navigation. I'm planning on making a feature highlight on the navigation, so let me know if you would be interested in that. I also made him be able to harvest resources. So if we bounce over to one of these forest tiles, you can see that this option to harvest shows up. 
And yeah, I know the UI won't be winning any beauty contests at the moment, but I'll work on updating that later. But let's click it and off he goes chopping down trees. And this collects wood. I was considering making the forest disappear after you've collected a certain amount of wood from it, but I kind of enjoy having them be infinite for now. No need to run around looking for new forests and worrying about running out of resources in case you have few forests around you. I could just change this if it makes sense later. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Alright, so now that I have collected some wood in the forests, I can head back over to my campsite. And as you can see, the campsite has this small area around it where the tiles are a bit lighter. And this is where you build and grow your city. We only have this tiny campsite right now, so this area is pretty limited. But later, when you upgrade your campsite, this will increase, giving you more room to work with. So let's click on one of the tiles in our city. And since we have enough resources, I can build a small tent. And with this tent comes a little new friend. And this is where things get interesting, because now the whole army and warrior building aspect of my game kicks in. Because I can control this new character just like my hero character, and watch this, I'll move him over to any of my other characters, in my case that will just be the hero character, and they combine to form a small army. And this army will now harness the unique strength of all its members, making the whole army have a unique set of abilities based on your choice. So now, because my hero character have a large movement radius, the whole army inherits that power and can move just as far. So say you have a character that is trained to be super fast, this army would be a lot faster as well. Now we just have two characters in our army, but the maximum army size is seven. So let's make some more tents all around our campsite and combine all our new warriors. And there we go, we have an army of seven. And each one of these warriors can be trained in a specific way to get unique strengths, which makes for a lot of interesting and strategic choices you can make for each of your armies. For now, they unfortunately don't do much, but that's the end plan at least. But what's the point in having these amazing armies without having any enemies? We need someone to play against. I hope to be able to make this game online at some point so people can play against each other. But for now, my plan is to make all the enemies AI controlled. I needed the characters to be able to attack, receive damage and die. So I placed a dummy character close to my campsite, which would act as a placeholder enemy. I played around with different ways of engaging in combat and ended up with having the character be able to select an enemy and attack it as long as it is within reach. When attacking, it will move over to the enemy and hit it until it dies. Then I gave the enemy the ability to strike back at you, and if all your characters die, the game will restart. I have yet to figure out a good win cause for the game, but for now it seems logical that the game ends if you have no characters left. Now that we have some basic combat ready, I think it's time to give our enemies their own little village to develop and protect. So I scattered some around based on how many teams we want to play against and gave each team their own AI controller. This controller will be making decisions for its team, such as where the characters should go and what they should do. And I must say, when it comes to handling stuff like AI, I really miss Unreal Engine's state machines and all those handy built-in tools it provides. I could really use some of that in Unity. Maybe there is, and I just haven't discovered it. If so, please let me know before I make my own complex systems. And yeah, there might be third-party plugins out there that do stuff like this in Unity, but for various reasons, I really don't want my project to be dependent on stuff like that. So if there is something I'm missing or you have some great suggestions when it comes to AI in Unity, shout it in the comments. For now, I'm keeping things simple with our AI controllers to get some basic interaction going for the enemies. They can walk over to resources and collect them, build tents and attack me just like I can. Just maybe a little bit dumber. <laughs> hopefully. It's not very complex at the moment, but will certainly grow in the future. A typical aspect of RTS games is that the map begins as an unexplored landscape, covered in what we call the fog of war. As we explore the landscape, this fog will clear and reveal new areas, resources and challenges to us. I want to bring this to tribes, and I did so by giving each of the tiles an explored state, and if a tile hasn't been explored yet, it will be displayed as a boring white tile. And as we explore, we uncover what these white tiles actually contain. If an enemy character or town is inside the unexplored areas, they'll be hidden. So we will have to explore to figure out where our enemies hide and how much progress they have made on their cities. So yeah, now Tribes is starting to take shape. While it might seem a bit simple and shallow right now, I truly believe that it has the potential to become something engaging and fun. 
especially if all of you provide input and recommendations for the development of it. That is definitely one of the most important reasons I want to build this community and have a good dialogue going between us. One of the most common pitfalls for game developers is that we're stuck with our own thoughts and ideas about something and forget to get other people's perspective on it before it's too fundamental to change. So I'm really hopeful that we can build an honest and helpful community to make tribes and our future projects the best versions of themselves. So thank you so much for watching and I really look forward to hearing your thoughts. If you want to stay up to date with the development of tribes and future projects, make sure to subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, a like would bring a big smile to my face. Thanks a lot. Catch you later.